This revision video is the fifth in a series about the A-level chemistry topic of acids and bases, and it's one of several that deal with pH buffers. In this video, we're just going to look at how you make a buffer and how they work to minimise changes in pH. And then there are further supplementary videos where we look at the calculations you need in order to work out the pH of a buffer and to work out the pH after you've added some acid or base. pH buffers are solutions that can resist or minimise the change in pH when a small amount of either an acid or a base is added to a solution. Now this is really useful if you're making use of some kind of biological system that has an enzyme at the heart of it, like DNA sequencing or polymerase chain reaction, because it means that whatever is happening in that chemical reaction, the pH will remain more or less constant at the optimum value for that enzyme. There are two types of buffers. We have acidic buffers, which buffer the pH below 7, and basic buffers, which buffer the pH above 7. And both of these are based on an equilibrium system. So in order to understand buffer calculations, you need to use all of your knowledge about equilibrium that you've learned earlier on in the A-level. Now, it's important to understand that a buffer can't completely stop changes to pH. Even if we're adding quite a small amount of acid or base, the pH will still change a little bit, just far less than it would if you were adding that acid or base to, say, water. But if we add an excessive amount of acid or base, then eventually the buffer will lose the ability to counteract that change and the pH will change quite dramatically. Before we look at any calculations involving buffers, let's look at how they're made and qualitatively what happens when we add small amounts of acid or a base. Acidic buffers, which can buffer pHs below 7, are based on the equilibrium that happens when a weak acid dissolves in aqueous solution and dissociates to make anions and hydrogen ions. It's important that you think of these as equilibrium questions, so when we get to the calculations, you're going to need to know all of your Le Chatelier chemistry from Unit 6 in Year 12. So here we've got ethanoic acid, which I'm representing as this purple rectangle, splitting apart to make ethanoate ions, which I'm representing here with the blue rectangle, and hydrogen ions, which I'm representing with a red rectangle. As you know, weak acids, and this has to be a weak acid to make a buffer, we can't use a strong acid, those weak acids only slightly dissociate in solution. So we have a lot of the undissociated ethanoic acid, and very little of the products, the blue anion and the red hydrogen ion. That's why Ka is so tiny, about 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 for ethanoic acid, because the equilibrium is really, really far towards the left-hand side. Now, if we add a small amount of a base, like sodium hydroxide, that will react with the acid to neutralise it and remove hydrogen ions. So here's my base, and there go my hydrogen ions. So we've removed those hydrogen ions, and we've effected a change in this equilibrium. So Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the system will shift to counteract that change. The equilibrium will move over to the right-hand side by favouring the forward reaction. And some of the ethanoic acid will now dissociate into anions and hydrogen ions. So the concentration of hydrogen ions will go back to almost exactly where it was before, although taking account of the fact we've slightly increased the volume of the solution, which will have an impact. But the concentration of ethanoic acid has decreased because some of that has dissociated and the concentration of anions has increased. Now let's reset back to where we started and try adding some acid. If we add a small amount of acid, we are of course adding hydrogen ions. And Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the system will shift to counteract that change and remove those hydrogen ions. The only way that they can be removed is by joining back up with the ethanoate ions to make more ethanoic acid. In other words, by favouring the backward reaction so that the equilibrium shifts back towards the left-hand side. And that's exactly what happens. So now there's more ethanoic acid and the concentration of that will increase. The ethanoate ions have been removed from solution, so the concentration has decreased. And the hydrogen ion concentration will be close to where it was before I added the acid. Now you can see here that even though I've only added a tiny amount of acid, I've run out of ethanoate ions. And that means that the buffer now can't do its job anymore. So actually, to make an acidic buffer effective at preventing a drop in pH, we need something besides the weak acid. We also need some spare anions to carry on um, soaking up those hydrogen ions, to sort of act as a hydrogen ion sink. So you can see here, I've added some extra ethanoate ions to my equilibrium, and there are two ways that I can do this. The first one is that I take my weak acid solution and I add a salt that contains the same anion. So for instance here I could use sodium ethanoate or potassium ethanoate and I could either do that by adding the solid salt or I could do it by mixing my ethanoic acid with a solution of sodium ethanoate or potassium ethanoate. 
The other thing that I could do is I could take my weak acid and I could add a small amount of a strong base like sodium hydroxide and then that will react with the weak acid to make the salt like sodium ethanoate. So whichever method I choose, I'm adding additional anions which are going to act as a sink for any hydrogen ions that I add to that buffer. In a basic buffer, which buffer's pH is higher than 7, I need a weak base like ammonium hydroxide and a salt that contains the same cation. Here, ammonia in water forms ammonium hydroxide, which only dissociates slightly. We also have ammonium chloride, the salt, which fully dissociates as it dissolves, producing far, far more ammonium ions than I get from the ammonium hydroxide dissociating. If acid is added to this buffer, then the first equilibrium can shift to the right, providing a source of hydroxide ions which will neutralise those hydrogen ions to make water. The ammonium ions from the second equilibrium can react with any hydroxide ions added to turn back into ammonia and water. This will mitigate the pH change caused by adding a small amount of a strong base to this buffer. Now that you know what acidic and basic buffers are and how they basically work, we're ready to move on to some calculations, but these are going to get their own videos so I can include lots of practice questions, because buffers seem to be an area where lots of students really struggle. Over the course of the next couple of videos, we will look at three different types of buffer and how to calculate the pH of just that unadulterated buffer. And then separately, we'll look at how to calculate the pH of a buffer after an acid or a base has been added to it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found that a useful introduction to acidic and basic buffers. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get the notification when I publish the next few videos where we're going to get stuck into some buffer calculations. If there are other topics you'd like to see covered, then don't forget to let me know in the comments below.